Mm. What's up, my brew crew? Wagwan people, what are you saying? It is I, Diligent Fingers. Good morning. Bit of a late start today. And not really, truly, I've got loads of stuff to do today um, because it's release day. If you've noticed videos on the channel already, Motion Gang Volume 2 EP is out now worldwide on all the digital stores, all your streaming sites, your favourite places and all that kind of stuff. I want to say, first off, as always, big love. Thank you to everybody who's supporting direct, everybody who's supporting the music on Bandcamp um, or on Juno. Do you know what I mean? Download or Beatport or anything. Anything that's not streaming. <laughs> <laughs> anything that's not streaming right now. If you're supporting the music through there, thank you so, so much. As an independent artist, there's an independent record label. Being able to have revenue come in rather than depending on streaming numbers and things like that, being able to actually put some actual money in the artists that are signed their pockets, do you know what I mean? If things go well, if the music music does well and people actually buy, do you know what I'm saying? Like things things like that really do mean a lot to me as an independent artist and I mean and as a label, independent label, it means the world to be to be able to give something back. You know, to the artists that are like releasing music on the label, and I will, I will admit, like being on my own, doing it, doing this like on my own, or at least with a very small team. But I'm doing the bulk. Do you know what I mean of the work? <clears throat> it's not. It's hard. Like I feel like I've not been able to do as much promo for for the last two releases as I would have liked because of other stuff going on, life and. You know, things like that and forgetting things, you know, as well, forgetting to be able to do, um, forgetting to do certain things at certain times because of depression and things like that, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's a bit of there's a little bit of guilt that comes with with handling other people's music and trying to do it to the best of your ability Um but being on your own, it's easier if it's your own music because it's only it's only it's your own. You know what's going on with it. You know your own expectations, all that kind of good stuff. But when it's other people's music, you've got to manage their expectations. You've got to manage their hopes, and you've also you're also taking on the responsibility of doing the best that you can with their creations. You know, with their babies, so to speak. Because I see all of my pieces of music as my babies them they're, they're my creations you know <clears throat> as erica Badu once said i'm an artist and i'm sensitive about my shit you know so <laughs> good like I'm, if i'm if i can be like that for myself then there's got to be you know an, an extent of that 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 i put forth towards you know the artists and the music from other people that I release on the label. It's music with Backbone Man, Spinal Records, isn't that so? But yeah, Motion Gang Volume 2 EP is out right now. Hold tight. Tripzilla and Vox, hold tight. Brady XK, hold tight. Um, DJ Direct, hold tight. Dr. Gank, big love for trusting me with your music and letting me put it out. And the stuff, man. And if you haven't heard it before, go and support. The links will be in the description box um, for everything that I might mention, music wise, label wise, and all that kind of good stuff. Like everything will be in the box down below. And you share. But outside of that, I was really thinking yesterday, like I had a couple of conversations yesterday. In that one with one of the people that I was I, w I was um, mentioning earlier in the week, and you know it was good to clear the air, and that most definitely from their side as well. It was good to like be able to, you know, have them clear the air and how how things went, and that and it's nowhere near as bad as I thought it was and stuff but at the same time I'm only like I only know one person's perspective 
and that. And it was all love. There was no animosity or anything, anything like that on both sides. Like I said in the earlier video, you know, does it make a difference knowing the answers to any of these things? Does it change anything, you know, in regards to me bettering myself, me, you know, fixing up and, you know, sorting out what I need to sort out in regards to me, like checking me, you know, you know, and understanding why I'm reacting the way that I'm reacting to these things and, you know, taking stock of how things have been over the last couple of years and how that can contribute to other people's actions because it's not just me in a vacuum <laughs> it's like you know but i had to think about i had to really think about you know why it was excuse me why it is that i have this sort of almost automatic I don't know what I don't want to call it fail safe. I'm not sure what what the right word is to use, but this almost this this state of, you know, oh, is that how it is? Okay, I'll just be on my own and I'll deal with it on my own and I'll do it myself. Then I'll go and get it myself. You know what I'm saying? And I had to really really think about it and look look back in that and really try and understand where it actually came from, and. It started, it, it came from foster care. It started in foster care. And I know the exact moment that it's, it, it, it started where this mindset all of a sudden developed in that, basically. I'm 16 years old in foster care. I'm still in school, just about to leave school um, and stuff like that. And it's Mother's Day. You know, I've started doing a little bit of work at that at quick save. I'm able to, able to earn a bit of money. And I've gone out and I bought my mum a Mother's Day present. And my foster mum wasn't very happy about it at all. You know, she'd been drinking. And, that, and that's no knock against her. She was going through a lot at the time. But she had been drinking. And I remember... We got into an argument. I remember it being mentioned that, oh, you can call me mum when you want. This is my foster mum saying this to saying this to me, um, a 16-year-old kid. You can call me mum when you want, but when it comes to Mother's Day, you know, I don't get a present or something like that, something, something like that. And to me, at that moment in time, one... I saw how people can try and be manipulative. And two, to me, that was just so disrespectful considering, one, I'm a 16-year-old, I'm a 16-year-old kid in foster care. I can't control what is happening to me right now. I can't control the environments that I'm in because I'm not a fully grown adult. Do you know what I'm saying? And... You know, me calling my foster mum, mum, you know, instead of a real name, after like four years, nearly five years of being in her care at that point, do you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, developing that kind of, kind of relationship, but she should know, you know, at the end of the day, this is a job. And yes, we do develop, develop feelings, you know, within relationships, but this is a job for you and you're not actually my my real mother my real mother is who i go to see at the weekends when i can when i've got the money to get up there and in between going to see my brothers and sisters back at you know their dad's place you know trying to keep up um keep up um connections over there like, you know the situation that I'm in. And yeah, because you're upset about your broken marriage and this, that, and the third, you're going to you're gonna take it out on a 16-year-old kid. And it, from that moment, like, I went, I went back to, I think it was some jewellery, and I went back to the jewellers, 
returned it, got my money back. And I remember buying like two bottles of Bacardi and then going, here you go, there, there, there. Once I leave school, I'm moving out. I don't want to be in this place anymore. And that, because for me, it was like, and you know, that why that was so significant? Why that was so significant to me at that time and why it means and explains so much going into later life and how I am now is because that was when I found myself, when I realised that I need to gain control. I need and, and like I need to be able to control the environment so I can I can at least trust what is going on around me. At that moment in time, that was where where I knew, you know, this is this is not where I'm where I belong. I don't belong here. Do you know what I mean? As much as I had gotten comfortable and I thought everything was cool and I thought there was an understanding at least. You know, if I'm saying these, if I'm calling you mum, it's out of affection and appreciation. But you don't know, and I don't know, that I have a mum, my real mum, who's suffering, who's struggling, who's depressed as fuck because she's not got her kids anymore. She took a chance because she was going through hell and she took a chance of putting us in care to get us, keep us in safety, keep us out of danger because she was going through hell. She's getting chased down by an ex, ex-husband who's willing to climb through kitchen windows to get at my mum to beat the shit out of her. I'm never going to forget that. And even though my, my foster mum may not have known about all of that, she may not have experienced that herself. She should have known in that moment that's not what you say to a 16-year-old kid in foster care. That's not... You don't try and manipulate a child to feel more for you than their own mother. To me, in that moment, that gave me an idea of what she thought about my mum. That gave me an idea of how she felt about my situation. But overall, it didn't make me feel safe. It didn't make me feel welcome. It didn't make me feel wanted. And it reminded me, I don't belong there. That was my safe haven. Do you know what I mean? Going from a multicultural area to a predominantly, you know what I mean, white area. In Hermston. Where... You know, I go outside and there's always a, a chance that I could get into fights and because of racism, because of bullying, because I'm the new kid in the area. Do you know what I mean? In a foster home and this, that and the third. Typical fucking kid teenager shit. Do you know what I mean? Bullying and stuff like that. <clears throat> so when I get home, when I actually get in the yard, like that's my safe space. I can go in my room, I can listen to my hip hop, I can write I can write lyrics now and I can do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's where I can lie in my head and sleep and sleep and feel safe and feel like, okay, at least if I belong somewhere, then I'll, I belong there. But in that moment, where I'm being made to feel guilty for choosing my own mum on, on Mother's Day than my foster mum. Yeah. And from there, it was like, I kept going to I kept going to places and that uh, I kept moving around Manchester so many times and whenever things went wrong and stuff, do you know what I mean? I was I would always end up feeling, Oh, okay, that yeah, this is this is not my space. Do you know what I'm saying? Whether it's, you know, because because I'd lived in more, I'd grown in my teenage years and formative years in more, you know, predominantly white areas and white spaces, you know, people would see me as more white than I am black. So when I would go into black spaces and I would talk about things that, you know, that I would experience living in foster care and it doesn't match up to where I live in the ends or where I used to live in the ends, 
oh you've been oh you you're the white sheep and you know you've been around them for too long and and, and i'd start to get looked at it. oh okay so i don't belong here either then oh okay cool all right cool i'll just i'll just, I'll just be on my own then cool Coupled with the fact of finding out how I was conceived through rape, so I'm a mistake. I wasn't conceived through love or anything like that. So I wasn't supposed. To, I wasn't supposed to be here anyway. And I know that. That I know. I know now that 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 is a very damaging thing, damaging way to look at myself and look at that situation. Even if it is, you know, technically the truth. Do you know what I mean? But. That is one of the main reasons why I have sort sort of a damaged view of myself. But put that with, you know, okay, so you were a mistake coming into this world from a horrible, horrible situation. You go into care and that you know you don't belong there and that and then you get to made made it gets made concrete and clear that you don't belong there. Then that you go out on your own, you go into world in into into the world trying to figure things out for, for yourself you go into spaces and everywhere you go you get you, you feel like okay i don't belong i'm not a part of this like you know and that's where the whole sort of outcast mentality is is developed in that diy do it yourself do you know what i mean in that like and it's it's, it's mad because individual individualism is being frowned upon today do you know what I mean? It's all about community and the the, the nuclear family, like that. A lot of a lot of people are like sort of fighting for and trying to push society back to and that. But sometimes society itself can breed that kind of thing. And this isn't a you know a a, a sort of a, 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 I lost my blackness or you know I hate my skin color or anything like that. Like. I give thanks. This is another reason why I give thanks for my mum. Because if it wasn't for my mum helping me to like understand, helping me to understand one me as a man and what my role should be as a man, and then me as a black man. Do you know what I mean? Because I've got I'm living in foster care and I'm fighting with the local kids that are calling me nigger and this, that, and the third. You think I'm not going to talk to my mum about that? So she was the one that would say in stone. Now you're an intelligent, strong black man. There has never been a point in time where I have hated being black. Never. I love my blackness. I love my heritage of being from Jamaica and and finding out that I'm also from like have Niger Nigerian heritage. Do you know what I'm saying? I love everything about being black. Because it's what, I, it's what I am, it's where I come from, it's my heritage, it's my culture, it's what I grew up, grew up with, like, and that's no slight to anybody else's heritage or culture, culture or anything like that. We should all be proud of where we are from and what we, what we come from, at least the good parts. Because don't get me wrong, I recognise and I don't hide from the bad parts of, say, Jamaican culture, like homophobia and things like that, that's fuckery. Do you know what I'm saying? I recognise those things and I condemn those things because, again, that's another example of discrimination. I can't be fighting against racism, but okay, be okay with homophobia. That makes no sense. And these would be these would be the conversations that I would have with my mum. The reasonings, you know. Being able to actually break things down in life. Do you know what I'm saying? With my mum. But at 17. At 16, sorry. Somebody else is trying to make me choose. Between that. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's another, it's another black woman. It's not another bright white woman before people start thinking. Oh, racism. No, 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 no. My foster mum was... My foster mum was mixed race. Do you know what I mean? She had black. Do you know what I mean? And she she represented and she appreciated her black culture. Do you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't anything like that. You know? It's just a mother 
you know, who's been looking after a foster mum who's been looking after a child and has gotten attached to a child. Do you know what I mean? That she's been looking after, having a very inappropriate moment of an of attachment with such child with said said child. Very inappropriate, but understandable. Understandable, but incredibly inappropriate, because you're the adult. I'm the child. I'm the one who's still trying to figure things out. You as an adult know exactly what's going on. Exactly, exactly why I'm in your care. How long I'm going to be in your care or how long I should be in your care. And what your responsibilities are while I am in your care. That shook the whole world up for me. And it was another moment of me having to grow up very, very fast. Very fast. Because I think I'd, I'd turned 16, I was leaving school that year. November, I would have been 17. And I think once I left school, I think a couple of months, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe a month or two, so say big Jan um, January, like the January after my no my November birthday, where I turned 17, that was when I got my first flat through social services. And from there, I was just out on my own. I rem And I remember that time being the time where I just sort of locked off from everything and everyone. And I was like, I'm figuring out, I'm using this time to figure out who the fuck I am. And I didn't I didn't see any of my family for a good two years. I didn't see my mum for a good two years. When I moved into that flat and like took stock of, okay, this is my place. I'm I'm actually out here on my own now. This is me. At that point, it was like, right, I have to take this time to figure out who the fuck I am. I didn't plan. I didn't say to myself, I'm not going to speak to anybody for two years. And duh, 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 duh. But I did say to myself, I need to figure out who the fuck I am. I'm out here now. I'm on my own. I've got a flat. I've got or an apartment for my American watches. Do you know what I mean? Non in, non British watches. I've got my own home. It's small. I've not even got a bed yet. I've not even got this. I've not even. I've not got that. Do you know what I'm saying? But I've got a couch, and a TV, and a few things that people have given to me. But I've not got anything. I've got to figure this out. I have to figure this out. And for good for a good two years, that was my focus: just figuring out life. I know how to get a job in this, that, and the third, and shit. I wasn't getting any jobs because I was unruly. <laughs> Proper unruly. Because I'm trying to figure it out. I'm away from my family. I've been, I've been made to feel like I can't go nowhere. Like, it hurt me, you know, when my brothers and sisters went back to their dad and I was told, no, you, you've got to stay here. Why can't I go to my mum's? Your mum's not fit enough to look after you. Shit. Crazy. But that's where it started. That's where it started. That's where I, I started to notice, okay, if I'm... If I'm not part of the status quo, if I'm not part of you know, the popular, what the popular kids do in this, that and the third, do you know what I mean, then I just don't fit in, I'm an outcast. And because of the life experience that I'd had, I had no choice. I was I was destined to be an outcast, so to speak, you know what I mean? Because I couldn't, I couldn't relate on, you know, teenage family things. I couldn't relate on, you know, experiences with girls, other than, you know, where I'm being fetishized, fetishized, also that fetish, where I'm a fetish, <laughs> I'll say it like that, because that was the time, like, early to, early to mid-90s, that was at the time, 
I was thinking, well, why'd you go black? You never go black. Oh, is, it, is it true what they say about black guys? And like, I, I'm not finding relationships. I'm just finding girls that want to use me. And I'm, do not get me wrong. I'm happily, like, accepting all of that. I didn't understand it at the time. I actually thought girls liked me. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I didn't understand what was happening at the time. But I didn't. I didn't shy away from it either. So do not get me wrong. But being able to look back and be like, oh, that's what that was. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? I'm the half brother. I'm the I'm the bastard. My dad ain't around. Like literally ain't around. Like not like he's just not there. He's like, he's in the area, but he's just not doing anything, like, being irresponsible. No, my dad literally cannot be found. I have no idea who he is or anything like that. That's a slight against me. I'm living in foster care. That's a slight against me. I'm living in the predominantly white areas, and unbeknownst to me, I'm picking up things because that's the home environment that I'm going to. That's a slight against me. I didn't know until recent years that you know if you're a teenage boy and you start you know dealing with white women then white got white girls then black girls are going to be like oh you're damaged goods you've all you've gone over to the other side we don't we don't want to deal with you i didn't realize that was a thing until recent years and it may explain it may explain a few things. <laughs> but again, again, it was out of my control. It wasn't like I was in in an environment where, you know, as a teenager, I'm surrounded by, you know, my own. No, I'm a fish out of water. Like, it's great. It's, like, it's crazy. It's crazy how much things you can't control can end up dictating. How your life is in later life. How things are in later life. is crazy when I think back to it. But that's where it started. And it's like last night was the realisation. Oh, I'm like I'm up, I'm up until four. I'm trying to get work done but I'm up until four. Just lost in thought. Like bro I've got to figure this out. I've got to figure this out. Especially at 42 now. I've I've got to figure this out. So then things can truly get better. I can truly have a better mind state. A better mindset. An outlook on things. It's going it's to have to come from, from understanding. It's like all of that time. Within that that sort of mindset of being on my own, doing it myself and stuff. That I've got to try and reverse now. And that to be able to sort of lead a more fulfilling life with more experiences. Because if there's anything out, if, if there's anything that you know, that experience of feeling left out that I talked about earlier this week has shown me is that, you know, as much as as much as I, I can be okay with being on my own. If that's if that's the case, you know, then so be it. I can I am absolutely fine with that. As much as I can be absolutely fine with that doesn't mean that I don't want group experiences with people that I consider friends, that I consider, you know, family. Do you know what I mean? The the family that I've made up. Considering my own family, like, makeup is just completely fractured at this point, completely broken at this point. We all need each other. We all need people. You know what I mean? I can't wait to meet 
you know, the woman that I can love for the rest of my life and be with for the rest of my life. I can't wait for that, but I know that there's things that I need to work on before I can truly facilitate that. Like my mental health, like my health, like my finances. All of that needs to be fixed first before I can entertain the relationship. And that's not me being hard on myself. That's just being realistic. And I've, I've talked about this a, f a few times before. But outside of, you know, that kind of a relationship, you know, actually building and having experiences with my friends rather than it just being, you know, business, business, music, 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 business, business all the time, which also can contribute to, you know, individualism, doing everything on your own, like having to move through, you know, different sort of, errors and working with different people and you gel with some people and you don't gel with others and then clicks and crews and this that and the firm and further developed and you know because we don't see eye to eye in terms of musical directions things fall apart and do you know what i mean like all of that shit can happen so and happens so often in music and because we're so involved in the in the music industry you know that can be that can become our real life rather than the reality of there's millions of people that don't do what we do and still have you know fruitful and healthy relationships and experiences that aren't centered around the goal of either making money or getting a release or reaching this label or getting this clout or you know One thing that me and my counselor talked about a few weeks ago, because I've not, I've not, I've not been in therapy for a, a few weeks. But one thing that me and my counselor talked about for a few, like a few weeks ago, was when was the last time I actually done something just for me, done something that just makes me happy. And I couldn't think of it. The closest that I came to was walking. Because that's the only time where I'm out in the elements. I'm able to just clear my head. I'm not stuck in these four walls. And that, do you know what I mean? I'm getting the fresh air, nature, depending on how long I'm walking for. Because I used to be able to walk for fucking hours years ago before my back injury. Um, but I'd be seeing areas. I'd be getting triggered, like, from old childhood, childhood streets. Do you know what I mean? That I used to live on and play on and experiences and you know memories and stuff like that like it would be wicked like where i live now like i used to live here years ago do you know what i'm saying saying it, it's like i've come full circle and stuff like i used to live here and at the, in the beginning stages of me establishing myself as an artist within manchester and you know working with different artists like frisco and roadie and doing my radio show out of and having the decks on the, the kitchen island and stuff and having people come round and you know my, my, my next door neighbour making me a chicken casserole for my birthday and bringing it round whilst I was doing a show and all that kind of stuff like and for years later nearly 10 years 10 11 years later actually longer than that like to say maybe 15 2008 2018 2000 yeah yeah 15 yeah, 15 years later, I'm back in this spot. I'm back in this area. You know, like a full circle moment kind of thing. So, you know, things like that. It's walking. It's probably the only time. And it's not even necessarily I'm walking because I'm, I'm, it makes me happy. It's more I'm walking because it's a way of being able to clear my head. Being able to have it out with myself. Do you know what I mean? In that, and instead of pacing around my flat, I'm actually pacing outside and I'm getting some sort of exercise or something. But it's not, I'm not initially doing it because it makes me happy. And it's not, you know, it's not attached to any goal or any agenda or any kind of reward or, you know, I, I, 
I can't remember the last time I actually did something because it made me happy. And that's something that needs to change. And part of facilitating that change is changing a behavior and changing a mindset that I've been stuck in for so long. That it's just, I can I can wholly admit it's just not, it's just not working for me anymore. You know, but yeah, didn't mean to make this morning vlog this long <laughs> at all. And that, nah, but I feel a lot better today. I feel a whole lot better. I feel a whole lot better after a few realizations and. Breaking down a couple of times and having a couple of cries and shit, mate. I feel a whole lot better. I feel like I've gained a better understanding of myself. And at the most in terms of why I do these videos. I hope it helps somebody else out there who's going through something similar to me. I hope me just talking about my experiences. You know, someone else relates and it helps them in some way even if it's just letting them know that they're not alone because for the longest time that's how i felt until you know i started doing these these videos you know a few years ago i started doing these videos and people were reaching me out reaching out and letting me know yeah they relate yeah they understand that's the main reason I can I can have conversations with friends and people in the scene and this that and the third about this kind of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's not the same when there's so much attached to those kind of relationships. But when it comes to doing videos like this, like the people that reach out and you know say that they relate or give me criticism or you know give me praise or whatever it is like the people that connect and communicate they don't need to do that but if someone makes the effort to do that you know to some to a complete stranger that they don't know that may be on the other side of the world i appreciate that i appreciate that you know that's why i do these videos and especially at a point where you know, I do feel alone and I do feel so not isolated, but like, you know, these videos do help. These videos do help. Sometimes it's just a case of just getting it out there, getting it off your chest, you know, rather than having somebody listen or someone try and give suggestions or anything like that. It helps. It helps me. And I hope it helps the people that are watching, the people that are listening. I hope it helps you too. So with that, didn't mean to make this a 40-minute video. <laughs> but happy Friday. Thank you very much for watching if you've made it this far. And that and listening. I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing weekend, because it is Friday where I am. Take it easy. Take care of yourselves, take care of your mental health, because good mental health is wealth, trust me. And as always, blessings to you all.